Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I am joined by Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar as we discuss the new national security policy of Pakistan. Put on your seat belt and you are going to be in for a great ride. Without further ado, I would like to now bring in our um, guest of the day, General Ravi Shankar. General Ravi Shankar, Namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram and thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for calling me. My pleasure, sir. And and by the way, an excellent article about the national security policy in your website. And and Thank the you. thing that really <laughs> the thing that really cracked me up was the the sentence that you said that Taliban Khan is dreaming of Riyasate Madina when he doesn't <laughs> know where he is going to get his next Pudina. Pudina, yeah, it's yeah, a fact. <laughs> look, uh, this is so, not something which I said. Uh, everyone today, a lot of people have said, "Look, what is this man talking of Riyadh Satyam Madina?" Right? And <laughs> someone has gone to the extent of saying this time was a pretty playboy who was cavorting around doing all sorts of nonsense, and today he talks of Madina and Pudina. Well, that's uh, General Ravi Shankar. I am reminded of a Telugu saying uh, which goes like this: "Minga uh, metuku ledu." Misa laku sampanga ni Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> for, for viewers who, who don't know what me uh, what for viewers who don't know Telugu, what it means is there is not a grain of rice to eat, but the guy wants to put sampige oil, which is a very fragrant oil, to his mustache. So yeah. to me, Pakistan is in that kind of a state, and for them to come out with a national security policy, and I think I'd like the good general to weigh in. On what he sees in it, and by the way, first let us start with where in the world is Kamar Bajwa? Well, I don't know. That's a million-dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Yeah, no. The security policy of a country is the prerogative of that country. It's uh, perfect for them to have it. But in this case, so. Uh, you know, they tried to pull a rabbit out of the hat. And I personally feel that this uh, security policy of this uh, nature, I mean, rather this particular security policy is more to, uh, you know, keep the army in power, more to ensure that, you know, the, the primacy of the military state of Pakistan continues. And that's what will be there in black and white, in the hidden part, which is not this thing. Though they've couched it by saying that, the core interest is economy, it is human security which matters most and all that. And they also made a hash of saying, you know, we want to open dialogue with India, etc. and all that. And yet they have gone about saying, you know, India is all full of Hindutva and it is regressive and it is against us. We And they've reiterated that we will take, uh, you know, Kashmir, whatever it costs, towards to that effect. And so I think it's a sham. <laughs> um, General Ravi Shankar, if you ask me, they might sell Pak occupied Kashmir to India for a price, and it, India might say, you know, we don't want it; it's going to come to us for free. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's also there. But uh, uh, you know, fundamentally, uh, for a country which says it's it, the core is the economy, and they're sp speaking of geoeconomics and ex issues like that. Geo economics works, you know, if there is an economy flourishing on one side and the other side and there's a cross movement and you are at the center of both these thriving economies. On Here, where what do you see? On one side is Afghanistan, which is a humanitarian disaster. On the other side is a, you know, uh, the fifth largest economy in the world with whom you don't want to talk also. On top is Xinjiang, which is in trouble. There, nothing can come down from there. On the bottom is, uh, you know, Arabian Sea, which doesn't have oil, which, you know, once upon a time, Pakistan was hoping it will be full of oil of the Karachi coast. So they're nothing. So what geo economics? Nothing. Right. Uh, their debt is uh, well over 100%. Their in imports are increasing. Exports are decreasing. From very significantly, Pakistan was a net exporter of food. Wheat and now it is uh, a net importer, 
right it has gone 23 times to imf uh, i mean i don't know we can keep going on i don't know where this economy is going to go i i don't know whether they themselves know where this economy is going to go so now general uh, ravishankar i'm sorry i thought you had finished yeah, please yeah. please no uh, and the only good thing about this policy i mean which is, which i feel is positive as far as a any international reader is concerned uh, for the first time they have spoken of uh, security issues which are beyond the traditional everyone knows the traditional quantified uh, security issue for them is india we they know it they have always said india is our existential threat etc etc but for the first time they have acknowledged that there are issues beyond india which affect their security uh, that's the only honest part of this uh, policy the rest is all fake though they have identified at places where you know all these matter but the way they have handled it and uh, they have not identified the threat they have not quantified the problem and how to tackle it so that's a, that's the fake part of it which is true to type yeah so now i want to get back to your statement that their agriculture their water table is in deep trouble now if i remember correctly india is not strictly implementing the indus river water sharing agreement india is allowing a lot of excess water to flow into pakistan let's say that india decides that we will go by the letter in that agreement what do you think will happen oh their agriculture will go for a toss completely you know i mean let let me put some numbers into this whole thing we have not been able to implement our or rather we have not been able to take our share of the indus water treaty which is supposed to be given to us or we can take if we just do that from the lower three rivers and take the run of water from the uh, top three rivers their water flows into pakistan will reduce by about 10 to 15% if water flows annual water flows into pakistan especially the satluj basin and the ravi basin goes down by 10 to 20, 15% in a year their agriculture will be completely hit remember pakistan is an agricultural country where 20 to 25% of the gdp still relies on agriculture their main import export item is agriculture right and the as it is today they are in a water scarce situation going into absolute water scarcity in a couple of years that means what 500 cubic meters per uh, head per capita less than that so they'll be in a very bad shape in fact their no. entire uh, you know future depends on how well they can mend fences with india so if this kind of a dire situation is staring them in the face then why all this rhetoric well you have to ask them see it goes back to the two things one why was pakistan established pakistan was to be not india anything not india is pakistan right a muslim state and you know all that well when that went today it is just revenge against the losses they've had to bear you know on the wars and since it's a pakistan army which is uh, in control they have to take revenge revenge is the only motive right it is also said that pakistan is the strongest army which has never to have won a war they have to reverse that this is what everyone says in the world so they have to win a war somewhere and winning a war against you know america a war that is irrelevant they have to defeat india in a war otherwise their reasons for existence uh, is just not there but today if you think about it uh, and and they all they they are also not uh, you know shy of boasting that their spy agency as if there is a spy olympics you know olympics spy olympics competition and that isi has got the gold medal they say that <laughs> we are the best security organization or secret service organization in the whole world i mean what gives them this kind of a, a, a feeling good feel good thing about themselves any idea sir look uh, that they are very proud of uh, they, like i said they are so proud of the fact that they have a very strong military they are proud of the fact that they have uh, great uh, nuclear capability and the one of the best uh, 
intelligence agencies in the world and let me let, let's put it they might be they might be the best but was it what has it given them the issue is that has this great security apparatus which they put together fed them has it given them you know economy has it driven their economy has it uh, benefited the common man today who doesn't know where his next meal is coming from has it stopped inflation no you know i read in one of their papers if they just cap their nuclear uh, you know program and downsize their uh, military to what is actually required it frees up 40% of their budget this is not a figure right it is plotted it is there somewhere where a pakistani has written and he says if if pakistani voluntarily says i don't i'll not be nuclear anymore the world will ensure pakistan is one of the most progressive states well um right now there's also talk that uh, this man could be deselected and somebody else might be selected in his place how do you think the life of a common man in pakistan is going to change if taliban khan goes and uh, some other uh, khorasan uh, <laughs> afridi comes <laughs> i don't think uh, any, it will make a difference whether it is uh, imran khan or butto or nawaz sharif all three after all the, the famous formula in pakistan is e is establishment e plus p1 any one of these parties should be greater than the other two then that is when you know the power equation of uh, pakistan settles into place it doesn't matter which party comes into power in pakistan right unless they change their fundamental attitude towards india and they change their fundamental attitude towards the rest of the world I, how, they'll remain where they are or in fact they'll keep going down the chute you know to to add weight to what you just said sir I, I i heard somewhere that imran khan went down to the rsi headquarters to meet with navid anju yes he must be he'll do everything he's <laughs> he'll do anything to uh, be in power that's it and in any case is a puppet right i mean how do you look at a national security policy drafted by the uh, military given to one non resident pakistani who's their nsa and then he reads it out and the the parliament also doesn't see it you know the what kind of a democracy is this and then they say we are a democracy jumhuriyat sir sir they they passed the resolution to expel the french ambassador <laughs> not knowing the fact that there was never a french ambassador yes, in the yes. first place first place I and mean, they'll do anything they you know, and you know this is a government which is in competition with the extremists in the sectarian violent uh, sects uh, within pakistan right everyone wants to be more religious than the other guy so if religion is the way you're going to do everything run your economy and everything where will you go after all there are other uh, economies which are muslim i mean nations muslim nations indonesia is a muslim nation uae itself is a muslim nation saudi arabia also is a muslim nation but at some point of time they they they, they segregate their religion from their economics and you know the the way they run the state and they run it in a manner where you know everyone is profit so many north african countries are uh, muslim states here is this muslim state which may wants to be more muslim than the rest of the world right and uh, it's truly going down day by day it, it, everyone seems to be in competition with each other only to be more religious than the other one thing that you never ceases to surprise me is that their own mothers grandmothers great grandmothers great 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 grandmothers they're all hindus and and well, they refuse to accept this and they want to try and you know uh, uh, make a beeline to some some other place which place will not even acknowledge their presence uh, the thing is 
well whether they are forefathers or hindus or christians i am not to bothered but one thing for sure is their their maximum cultural linkages are with punjab and rajasthan right and to some extent the jammu and kashmir region right the linkages are this side right and here is a set of guys who were part of this subcontinent now who want to seek ancestry of being turks arabs salafis this fist that fist and uh, achieve nothing they uh, the moment we forget the fact that we are you know of a particular ethnic stock with respect to the religion then you lost the trick then you're living in an imaginary world you're an imaginary gladiator you want to behave like them you don't know what you are right and uh, so that's how it is you want to become an afghan you know or a, some warlord everyone wants to be a warlord now that's a country of gladiators right? and, and you touched where... upon the sorry sir i thought you were yeah please yeah. go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead you also touched upon the fact that there are 36 odd universities are producing people who are not finding any jobs and uh, that you know even the education level perhaps is not up to the standard where they can land uh, good positions they don't even have full time faculty uh, general ravi shankar if i remember correctly the exodus of the knowledgeable middle class started sometime i think in the late 60s maybe and it has gone on and now i don't think there's any intellectual class left in pakistan i could be wrong about this sir you know more about it than no, i do no I, I, i you're right in the sense there are intelligent uh, pakistanis there are right thinking pakistanis still there uh, they might have anti india views that's okay that i don't mind because that's a nationalistic bent of mine but the fact is today with the way their edu- with the way their uh, you know population is growing and their education is reducing and what they i mean they have about 230 universities uh, with almost no faculty and uh, so what are they teaching one doesn't know the only university which is run on some fantastic lines is all those seminaries and the universities of jihad which are on the fata area along with the durand line which uh, zia ul haq had set up they produce uh, these jihadists uh, quite regularly right otherwise there's nothing so i mean uh, when did a last guy get a nobel prize from pakistan or will any university from pakistan figure in the top 100 in any subject right you don't you read, read parvez hood boy who is one of the you know more scientific thinkers yeah yeah right i keep reading him right and he is very clear he says science and religion are like oil and water they don't mix <laughs> uh, okay i can quote that's his quote and uh, he says unless and, and he says look hargobind kohrana had his origins in lahore right he had his association with lahore because he was hargobind kohrana and the indian we said no he should we disowned him but whereas he learned his science here that's what he says right and why couldn't we why couldn't pakistan say okay he was a, a product of this land no right you look at that abdul samad bangladesh you know who did a lot in social uh, work again he was basically fundamentally a pakistani but pakistan has disowned him right so they have their huge problems until such time the education doesn't change you know uh, nothing will change in that country Uh, general uh, ravi shankar i am reminded of a story that i read a few years ago of a doctor uh, who came from lahore medical college you know partition is happening people are getting killed now these are the people students who are in their final year of medicine in lahore medical college a very famous uh, at that point was a very famous institution and the principal was a hindu and the principal wrote letters of recommendation that these escapees they had to really escape from uh, pakistan to come to india and and he wrote uh, he put them as far away from the border as possible like one came to vishakhapatnam like andhra university and, and and because he had known all these people as part of any yeah. conference or the other and that man stayed back sir we don't even know what happened to him 
and and this is how they you know they didn't have any value for any hindu who was left behind no they don't have they don't have in fact if you see uh, you know they talk about muslims and the state uh, the status of muslims in india if you look at the status of minorities in pakistan they dwindled whether it is sikhs hindus christians you know they have been persecuted all this nonsense of blasphemy which is going on there is against you know other uh, religions so well that country is in well all the best to them with their security policy they need it badly yes yes indeed and uh, with that i think uh, we can call it a wrap today and viewers please send in your comments and uh, general ravishankar thank you so much for agreeing to record this at such short notice and oh, i loved your article and i look forward to more such yeah. uh, humorous pieces on looking at i think the title is back to the future or something like that back to like the future because, yeah yes uh, actually the you know the, i read this in the dawn where uh, you know an author has described that about pakistan going uh, you know its reserves falling and importing food stuff and you know xyz and i felt look it it describes pakistan today except that that report was of 1980s 82 given <laughs> 82 by usaid agency which had given so nothing has changed from then to now in pakistan it has gone from bad to worse the thing which uh, actually concerns me i couldn't care a damn what happens to pakistan it's okay i mean pakistan and those 200 or not million pakistanis can uh, you know be what they want to be but the fact that there's a degenerate nation next to us right uh, uh, it's going to pull us down at a time when we need our uh, kind of internal stability and we are on the verge of uh, you know going up the value chain Absolutely. Thank you very much, General Ravi Shankar. I think, uh, or I wish uh, Imran Khan would look at Bangladesh, which has actually listened yeah. to India and have put some things in place, and they are doing extremely well. I must say. No, there are a lot of uh, lot of Pakistanis who now say, "Look at Bangladesh. It is growing at twice our uh, GDP, and all their uh, metrics are much better than Pakistan by a mile. And where are we?" they i mean i hope their intelligentsia who whatever is left there comes up and you know uh, someone listens to them in, with them absolutely listening part is the harder one i think general ravi shankar as always a pleasure on having you on our channel sir namaskar thank you